may please record. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Journal Club Research Mentorship Sessions. Always a pleasure to have you and to learn together, to grow together, to laugh together. I'd like to welcome those of us who are guests. If you are not a member of Journal Club, please raise your virtual hand. Oh, I see that actually we have, everybody here is a member of Journal Club. All right, in that case, um, you know the drill. I'd like you to please introduce yourselves in the chat. Please tell us your name, institution, if any, if you I have any institution. Uh, tell us what your research field of interest is. Are you in any re discipline? Um, and also your expectations for this workshop. So kindly please do that. I see a lot of introductions already coming in, so I'll read them. Emmanuel Chikalipa, University of Zambia in Zambia. And he says that um, his field of interest let me see if I can find it. I don't know where it went. Okay, I'll go back. <laughs> oh, he didn't say. All right. Then we have Eric Okod in Kisu. Oh, sorry. Emmanuel Chikalipa, University of Zambia, field of interest, plant breeding, genomic, and seed systems. We have Eric Okod all the way from Kisumu in the Great Lakes region of Kenya. Then we have Patrick Mutinda from Kitui County, consulting for the World Bank on forced migration issues. Milcent Ikere, Kenyatta University Intensive Care Nursing. Stephen Olubuliera, FELTP resident, that's under Ministry of Health, pursuing a Master of Science in Field Epidemiology at Moy University. We have Enoch Marita, consultant interested in public health research and knowledge management. Isaac Nketsia, University of Cape Coast, uh, his field of interest is enterprise development and intellectual property management and finance. Thank you so much for your introductions. Uh, also feel free to write any expectations you may have for today's workshop. So I'd like to introduce our presenter for the day, who is one of us, and we are very privileged to have you today, Conrad Ojiambo. Conrad is a doctoral fellow at Strathmore University, where he teaches data management and digital transformation related courses in the School of Computing and Engineering Studies. He has vast experience in creating and deploying questionnaires for mobile data collection by supporting research at Strathmore Business School using Cobo Toolbox and ODK. I'm sure most of you may know what ODK is. Um, if you don't, you will he, he will tell us. He also runs his own consultancy known as InfoWise Analytica, doing pretty much uh, the same kind of work with clients who may want to seek him out. So I hope that at the end of this session, Conrad, you can also share your email address for those who may want a lot more um, interaction with you. He says that in his free time, he likes outdoor activities. So I'm curious, is that traveling? Is that um, hiking? I'll be happy to hear that. But of course, for today, what you need, all of you, is a smartphone. I believe you do have a smartphone because most of you must have seen uh, today's uh, webinar through your phone, WhatsApp, platform and of course you need stable internet and preferably a laptop or a desktop pc so that you can access the very highly practical session using your mobile device and your computer all right thank you so much everyone and now i'd like to hand it over to uh, conrad to tell us more about introduction to mobile data collection with cobo toolbox welcome conrad uh, thank you very much, Mangare. Um, I'm honored and privileged to, to actually be presenting at AIDA. Um, you want to start you, your video or uh, you prefer for it to be off? 
Yeah, um, because I'm just going to share the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, but no, let me just switch on so that uh, I hope. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I'm very privileged. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I think I've been taking too much from Ida. So many free and nice sessions from everyone. So I also feel honored to be able to also give something. So this session, as uh, Wangaria said, is just about how to use uh, mobile data collection tools, uh, specifically Kobo Toolbox. Uh, how to create a questionnaire, how to share it, uh, and you know how to enter data in it. So without much ado, um, I'll start. And I think uh, you've, we've already gone through the introduction, so I'll not I'll not uh, say anything more there. Let me just. Um, let me first of all say that the first thing we need to do, okay, so I've already said what we'll go through, sorry, sorry for that. We'll actually, first of all, um, go to the Cobo Toolbox website, create an account, and once you create an account, then we'll actually start creating a questionnaire. And then once we are done with the questionnaire, now creating the questionnaire is where there's most of the work so that we can understand the different types of questions, you know, things like skip logic and validation. Uh, and then from there, once we have created the questionnaire, we'll be able to uh, install Kobo Collect on our mobile phones. And then from there, you can now be able to enter data and then download that data. And finally, uh, finally, then you can be able to share your questionnaire with other, uh, other, um, you know. For example, if you're in the field, you'll not do the data collection alone. You might be having enumerators in the field, so you'll want them to access the form so that they can also enter data. Yeah. So that's what we are going to do. Uh, so very quickly. I want you to actually go to uh, your internet browser and we'll set up a Kobo Toolbox account. So you'll go to www.kobotoolbox.org. I would have taken you through creating an account, but all my email addresses have <laughs> a Kobo account. So I'm not even able to create one. So I'll just put that URL for those who like to directly click. and then click on sign up. Okay. So in order for me to understand or to see how far we are going, I'll just be setting up a poll and asking how many have done this so that I can know the percentage of people who've done that. So go to Kobo. Uh, excuse me, there are two accounts. There is unlimited use for humanitarian organizations and there is researchers, aid workers and everyone else. Yes. Uh, so go to research aid workers and everyone else. Go okay. to this one. Yeah. And it's pretty much easy. You just continue set up your account by giving your name, your organization name. You need to put a unique username, which is different from your name. Your name is your name in full. And then your username will be unique. So you might find that maybe some usernames have already been taken. Like um, maybe if you say Wangare, I'm sure Wangare, there are many Wangares. So maybe you might want to say something like Wangare psychology, I don't know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, Wangare is taken, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, so they have to be unique. Something you can easily remember too. And then put your email address. You can put your sector if you're in education, like me, I'm in education, or maybe you're in humanitarian or whatever. And of course, your country, male, female, or other. 
a password that you will definitely remember. And then just click on create account. So let me just check if there are any questions. Okay. So far, none. So I'm just pausing so that sometimes people, you know, we are not all at the same pace. So if you hear me being a bit quiet, I'm just allowing people to, you know, do it. Well, but if you've done it, then go to your email account, the one you've provide, provided, you should be able to see a, a confirmation. So go to your email and locate the email that asks you to activate your Kobo Toolbox account and then just click on the link to activate it. And once you once you um, click on the link to activate it, bravo, you would have been, you'll go right directly to the Kobo Toolbox interface where you'll see this button called new and we should be able to start creating our account. So I don't know how to create, I don't know, do I have the permissions to create a poll? Let me just write on the chat how many have reached the end so far, how many are still creating the account? So just reply, if you are done, reply done. If not, reply still on. Patrick is done. Joyce is still on, Ongari, Simon is done, Sylvia is done, David is done, Emmanuel is done, Isaac is done, so we can give the others just a few more minutes. And those who are done, bravo. If you need any help, let me know if you're stuck. No matter what I enter, the username is not accepting. So I don't know. Oh, what. really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I've tried like six options, different, with underscore, lowercase numbers, and capital letters, everything. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Same why. to Lillian. Lillian seems to have that same problem. Mm -hmm. Does uh. it? Does that problem only affect ladies? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem is that it has to be very unique. So maybe I might ask that you don't use a username linked to your name. Maybe just try to create something that you think might be quite unique. Because maybe like, as I, I mean, I, I can imagine um, uh, so many Wangari researchers, maybe they've all used that combination. <laughs> yeah, okay, let me try. Uh, okay, Maja Jakarasi is done. Oh, so Maja is giving us some very good idea, no fast cap. That means that the, 
the first letter should not be a capital. Oh, okay. Let me try. Let's try that. And that's something I was also not aware of. Enoch is done. Sylvia has some good idea there also. Try using some of your name, initials, then surname. Mildred is done. So of course, I'm still seeing people. Let me see who may not have responded in terms of being done. Elvis, Catherine, Catherine, did you respond? Julian, Lillian, I hope you're trying without the caps. Marion, Martin, Marcy, Michael, Rosaline, Ruth, Sabla, Sylvanas, Oh, Catherine already has an account, Simon and uh, Stephen, okay. Uh, put, kindly post the link, Sabla, okay. The link to Cobo Toolbox, yeah? Mine finally worked, it was the cap, capital letters. Thank you for that. Okay, team. okay. Yeah. Okay, Stephen. Yes. Elvis, okay. Already have an account. Okay, so I just want to get consensus on whether I can move on. Is everyone okay? So that I can move on, okay. Okay, so you should be in the Cobo Toolbox um, interface. And don't worry about my screen because as I've said, um, I do this, I've been doing this. So there are so many, you'll see so many things, but yours should be blank. I believe those who, especially for those who are new, you'll find that it's actually blank. Uh, but for those maybe who, have already created some forms before. Maybe you'll see things like this. So this is the Kobo toolbox uh, interface. And there are many things uh, related to that interface, but maybe we'll only be able to go to understand them once we create a form and enter data. So you know, things like the summary, the form, the data, the settings. Okay, now we want to create a form. And it's just a basic form. Uh, I'm not, uh, we might not be able to use all the data types, but just uh, as I said, it's an introduction. So just a basic form. So what I want you to do is to click on new, the new button on the top left. And you'll see that there are four options. You can be able to build a form from scratch or to use a template or to use an XLS form or uh, import an XLS form via URL. So the second option is to use a template. If we have a template that of, a, of, of a type of questionnaire, we can use it. We are not going to use that option either today. We can upload an XLS form. Uh, maybe in another session, we can do a bit more of advanced forms and then we can look at XLS forms. So again, we'll not look at that option. It's for a, 
advanced users and importing an XLS form from a URL is also uh, you know, similar to just uploading an XLS form, but of course, from the internet. What we want to do today is to build a form from scratch. So just click on build a form from scratch. Everyone there? Now, you may have a project, okay? Maybe like um, our friend from Zambia is doing, you know, plant, uh, you know, things to do with plant uh, breeding. So maybe he's out in the field and he has a project on plant breeding. So you would give the project a name, the name of the questionnaire, okay? Uh, or maybe you are collecting data from farmers about their experiences during COVID, whatever it is, just give the project or the questionnaire a name. Ours is an example form, so you can call it my form or example form, whatever you decide to call it. Sorry. Or my form. It's also good to give a description. Uh, like I said, for example, uh, if um, you know you have one minute, let me just yeah, let me just give an example here of one. Though you don't need to type it, I'm just giving an example because it was a real form. Uh, <clears throat> so the description here was final survey household questionnaire 2022. Strathmore University in partnership with Agri EPI Center Limited, Harper Adams University, and Usomi Limited. Okay. So in a real situation, you would be giving the description of the survey. Ours is just, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an example form. And actually, yeah. Okay, so back to there. Let me just say example form. And maybe our description here is simply um, you know uh, introduction to introduction to Bobo. Okay. You can give a sector and your country, but that is also optional. Now, Kobo Toolbox likes to also, you know, have any information shared. If it's in a real setting and you feel that the data you collect can be accessed by, you know, um, other organizations, you can opt to share by clicking there. But in our case, this is also just an example. So it, we really don't need to share that data. Then you can click on create project. Sorry, I've just seen a question here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so is everyone here? Once you click create project, you should now be able to create, uh, get now to write the new, uh, to, to type the questions. Okay, excellent. So, Let's so we want to create a simple questionnaire about households and whether they have, you know, where you take the respondents' personal details, like the name, the age, whether they are married, the household details, you know, like income what economic activity they do and such kind of things, and then their GPS location, just a simple form. Okay, so the first thing we do is to, there's this plus button here on the left. When you click on it, you can create a new form. The first question we want to ask is, what is your name? So type there, what is your name?
And once you type what is your name, you can see this interface here, this button here, add question, click on it. And what we see here are the different types of data types that the question can take, what kind of values they can take. I'll not go through all of them, but I'll mention some few important ones. Uh, select one would be where we want the respondents, respondents to select one option. Like for example, what is your gender, male or female? So they need to select only one. Select many would be where you have multiple options that can be selected. For example, what economic activities do you engage in? So maybe a person can be doing farming, he can also be doing border border, he can also be owning a shop, and therefore he has multiple uh, economic activities. Text is where you want the person to write some piece of text, maybe in a small narrative form. Like for example, what is your name would be text because um, writing a name like Conrad Ojambo is textual. Number is a numeric value that is an integer, one that is indivisible, uh, no, not, not indivisible, but does not have decimal points. Uh, so for example, how many cows do you own or how many animals do you have? You would only have whole numbers. But if you've got decimals, like for example, how many hectares of land do you own? A lot of times hectares of land would be you know, either a whole number or even in decimal point like 2.5 hectares ETC. Then we have others like dates and time and date time. So if you want to collect a date, then you'd use date and a time, you'd use a time. Point is when you want to use GPS locations. And GPS locations, there are two, actually three, uh, point, line, and area. So you can have a particular point where you've got the longitude and latitude, or you can have a line between two places, two longitude and latitude places, or an area, a polygonal uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, a geographical area. Uh, Yes, I think I'll deal with those only for now. Actually, that's what our questionnaire will have only. There are other, others, and maybe because of time, we'll not go through them, but they're equally important in research, like rating, ranking, and question matrix. Uh, if I have time, we can go through them, but uh, I think for now, let's use the basic ones. So back to our question, what is your name? It is a text. So just click on text and therefore, we'll now have our question uh, available. We'll add the next question, click on the plus sign again. And the next question. I'm making, yes. Yeah, what is your agenda? What is your agenda? Okay, so who can tell me which type shall we select for what is your agenda? Somebody? Uh, my name is Idrisu. So you have to select uh, one. Yes, correct, Idris. Select one because you only want one response. Okay, so we can have, so when, when you select, when you use select one, you can see options come, come here, okay? option one, option two, but they don't only have to be two options. If you want to add more, there's one here, a, a small button here where you can say click other, click to add other responses and another option will appear. So let's say option one is male and option two is female. A lot of those in the chat have responded one, they are also right. We have seen, thank you. Yes. Michael, yes, and Stephen, yeah, all those are correct. And 
nowadays with gender, people say maybe prefer not to say. So you can actually have the third option, prefer not to say. You, when you have a form, you might have a coding scheme so that if a person responds male, it is coded as one, female, two, and maybe prefer not to say, it's coded as three. So. There's a question from Enoch. Yeah. He says, sorry, I got lost after activating account. Okay, we'll get back to him in a minute. So is it more advisable to follow the screen on the on a computer and use Kobo on the mobile? Or we can also have, you know, two screens on the computer so that to follow what's going on in the Zoom. Uh, for mobile, because mobile is not shareable, I have some slides on what you will do. But if you want to split the screen, that's fine, but it will not, for, for the mobile, I'll just show some slides on how you'll go about it. All right, thank you. So this one is the more the, the computer-based app. Yeah, this one is computer-based. Okay. You have to create the form thank first you. on a computer, and then is after that is when we'll download Kobo Collect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. link it to the, yeah. All right, so uh, Patrick says, I'm using mobile for Zoom and Kobo on laptop, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if you oh. if you prefer two devices or the same device, different um, screens, um, yeah. members, you can do that. Yeah, um, and actually this is why I was saying you would need internet, a mobile phone, and a laptop or a PC, so that it becomes easier to create the form on your laptop or PC, and then later use Kobo Collect for collecting. Otherwise, if you try to create this from the phone, I know it can be a little bit more, it can be a bit tough. Okay, anyway, so let me just finish this section, then I'll address Enoch in a while. So you can put your code in here, here where you have XML value, maybe male is one, female is two, and XML value is three. Okay, so that we can have our codes. So let's just create two more questions, then I get back to Eno. I believe by now we are already getting a little bit of the hang of it. But let me mention a few things. Number one, if you want to delete an option, for example, prefer not to say, you can click on this small bin next to it and delete because that allows you to delete uh, a question, okay, or rather an option. And actually, same to a question. If you want to delete a question, you just, there's these icons here. The first one is the settings. The second one is to delete. The other one, you can duplicate the question. And the fourth, you can add a question to the library so that you can reuse it, okay? But for now, we don't want to delete anything or copy anything. There are a few questions on the chat, but they are being answered. Isaac okay. is, is asking, is Kobo on Google Play Store? And Zadok is answering, it's on mobile phone. One can use as well as the web-based platform for, from the phone browser. Yeah. yeah and somebody so, is asking how to insert the coding for Day Kamara. Yeah, so um, when creating the form, it is more advisable to try to create it from the uh, web-based interface. It might be much easier than trying to use your mobile phone. Okay. But otherwise, there's a tool called Kobo Collect, which you use now for entering data. Here, we are trying to, first of all, create the form before we can use it to collect data. Uh, for the, here, the codes are here. Once you have, for example, you have mail, you can see this XML value here. If you have a code like one for male or two for female, then you can put it there. Yes, Kobo Collect is available on Google Play Store. Okay, so for there, I hope I've answered you.
Bomboy says Kobo is on Play Store for Android users when collecting data. However, on iPhones, you have to fill through the website. Okay. Thanks for that information. Yeah, Kobo is well answered. Okay. You may yeah. continue. And unfortunately, most of us actually are Android users. Um, <laughs> so sometimes, you know, when it comes to I, uh, Apple products, maybe they are least commonly used. But that happened one time, one of our enumerators had an iPhone uh, and there was a way we went about it actually. Okay. Now, I, can, I want to mention one thing also called collapsing. You can see that as you continue putting details, you are like here, what's your gender? We've got the options, male and female. So you can just, you know, the form can end up becoming unwieldy. So you can collapse it by just clicking this uh, button here and then the details will be hidden. So we can then continue. Another question. The next question is, what is your age? I know most of the time we ask for date of birth, but just to simplify this, of course, that would also be a number. Because it's an integer, I mean, we just want an integer. And you can see there's something called a hint, question hint. Sometimes you need to give more information so that whoever is entering the data can know precisely like for example what is your age maybe some people might want to say i'm um, five i'm um, um, you know 20 years old and six months or some people might you know uh, even say you know like i'm um, you know uh, 50 and a half years old so a hint would give more information or instructions for the person entering data on what is needed to be done, uh, what, what, what needs to be put. So you can put hints in your questions, like here maybe, so just below what is your age, you can say in brackets, enter age in years. Okay. Enter age in years, so that, whenever the person is entering the age, they should only put it in years. So this is just for display purposes, okay? So if you have hints on your questions, then you can utilize that section for putting hints. The next question we'll put is, are you married? Again, this is a select one type of question. And we can put there's, yes. There's some questions coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Lillian Musembe asks, can one edit a question? Okay. And Isaac Nketia says, please still on age, what if you want a range such as 15 to 20 years? Okay, those are very good questions. Let me start with uh, Isaac. I'll come, there's a section on that. I'll, I'll demonstrate it. So I've just got some small subtitles. In as much as I'm going through the screen, there are just some small subtitles I have. So I'll come to validation. So that is called validation. You can actually, and actually let me not, let, let us let us actually, we can do even that validation right now so that we can uh, put you at ease. And for Lillian, yeah, you can actually edit your question. Like for example, here, uh, you want to, uh, you know, what is your agenda? I know this is not a, a very good term, but most of the time people don't like that, but you can, you can edit it, what is your sex? Or are you married? Yes, no. And as we said, we have the options to add more, like again, we can say prefer not to say, or even divorced, or something like that. So yes, you can just go back to your question 
and edit it as you wish, okay? However, uh, when it comes to the type, when it comes to the type, for example, if you have a question like, what is your age? And it was an integer number, but you wanted it to be in decimal, you cannot edit that. So you would have to create another question. You'd have to create another question. What is your age? And, you know, put it in decimal. And yeah, so as you can see, these icons show the different types of data types that the question takes. Okay, so again, that would uh, th th that would end up being, uh, uh, you know, you'd have to delete that other question and create one with a new type. I'll just delete that one. Now for validation, enter your age. What is, uh, what is your age? So as I said, I'll still talk about validation a little bit, but here is a quick validation for age. You can say, for example, so here we've got these small buttons, these icons, there's this one that looks like a gear, it's the settings. So click on that for that particular question and click on validation criteria. Now, once you click on validation criteria, click on add a condition. And once you click on add a condition, you'll see something like this question has to be, and then you can see a greater than sign, but when you click on it, you'll see more options. Okay, so uh, let me see, you had wanted 15 to 20 years. Okay, so in this case, we say this age should be greater than or equals to 15. Okay, and then once we do that, again, we have an option to add another condition. So this question has to be, again, this time less than or equals to 20. We want respondents who are between 15 and 20. So this question has to be greater than or equals to 15 and less than or equals to 15. Now down here, because this is a criteria that, a criteria that has got um, two conditions, you can see question should match all of these criteria or questions should match any of these criteria. So back to you audience, what do you think should be the case? Should we have the question matching all the criteria or any of the criteria so that we can only capture between 15 and 20? All. Yes. Okay. It has to be all. Okay. Question should match all of these criteria greater than or equals to 15. And if you're using SQL, you'd be using the and operator and less than or equals to 20. Now, down here, there's what uh, is called excuse an error me? message. Uh, for day, Kamara says she's lost. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and for day, this was for you, but no, no, this was uh, uh, Nani, what was his name? Okay, no problem. Yeah, Let me finish with the error message. Yeah. Let me finish with the error message and come back again. Now, okay. in case somebody enters a wrong age, like maybe a hundred years or three years, we want to put an error message or tell them that 
this is invalid. So maybe you can type that the error message age is not in range. Okay. And maybe we can go further and say enter age between 15 and 20. So that your enumerator will be reminded the kind of values that are required. Now, lastly, just before I come to four day, remember what does Jesus do? Anybody, what does Jesus do? Those who are Christians. Saves. He saves, yes. So save your work on the top right. And you'll see something like successfully updated on the bottom left. Yeah. Okay. Four day. We have a we have a hand raised by Isaac, but I think you can start with four day and then Isaac. Okay. Patrick, yes, Jesus redeems. So even to save is to redeem your work, you can redeem it later. Now um coming back to four day. What we, were, what we were saying here is that uh, somebody had asked the question about validation, and I'd said I was going to cover it later, but just to uh, preempt it, sometimes you can have some questions whereby you want your values to be within a particular range. They need to be valid for a specific set of values. So in this case, so you can close this, you can click that close button. In this case, for example, we want to validate the age. So Isaac asked, what if I want to enter? I, I want my questionnaire to have an age range between 15 and 20 years. Nobody can be below 15 or above 20 years. So in this case, we have validation rules. You can create validation rules by going to the, left, uh, to the right of your question and clicking on this icon called settings. It looks like a gear, a gear wheel. Okay, so you, when you click on setting, settings, there are two options on the left, skip logic and validation criteria. In this case, we want to put some validation criteria. Uh, and then once we put the validation criteria, you can now put which criteria you want your question to check. Okay. Now here we've got two conditions. That's why we have to specify them as two conditions. Let me delete this. So once you come to validation criteria, you have to put other condition. Okay. Let's say we have only one condition. For example, we want to say the person should be the people, the respondents should be older than 18. So we'll say here, this question has to be, and in this case, we'll look for maybe 18 and above. So we can say greater than or equals to, and then we have a response value 18. Such that anytime somebody enters, and actually let's save this, let me just, let's save this. I'll not put um, the other condition for now. Let's test this one. And then, as I said, we need to put an error message and say age not in range, enter age 18 or above. Okay. So click on save. So just to demonstrate this, then go to the top left here where you can see this eye preview form and click on preview so this gives you an example of how your form will be so you can say what is your name you can put your name what is your gender what is your age now let's say i put an age like 44 Sorry, I don't think, uh, no, sorry, 44 is valid, sorry. Uh, maybe like two, 
you can see age not in range, enter age 18 or above, okay? So when the enumerator enters a wrong age, then it will be rejected. So Isaac's example was having two conditions. The question must be between, no, sorry, the age must be between 15 and 20. So that's why we were putting two conditions. I don't know if this puts you at rest uh, for day. For day, are you well answered? Yes, for day says she's well uh, answered. There is a comment by Stephen about um, it is always advisable to collect age as raw data, then grouping the age later during data analysis. Uh, so about age grouping or categorizing, um, Isaac responded that not everyone would be comfortable giving raw age. So I think this is more about the decision to include the options of age ranges. And I know that sometimes people also add date of birth because sometimes people don't remember their exact age. And if you have a second question on date of birth, it might help to confirm. But um, Isaac's comment is interesting um, that not everyone is comfortable giving raw age. I guess it, dep it depends on which type of study. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. But that question is more around designing the the study yeah. and, and, and the survey tool. Yeah, maybe what's your take on that? Yeah, that, that is purely Hello. the policy of how you decide Hello, the survey is going to be. Uh, okay, Hello, Joyce. Welcome, welcome, Isaac. You can speak for yourself, Karibu. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Joyce. Yeah. Before, yeah. before I respond to that, I think my, my question was, I think was misunderstood. That's what David is even asking. I was asking if, what if it's not um, a specific um, age that you have to use number that the person should indicate. Maybe it's five years, it's 17 years, it's 20 years. That one is straightforward. But if we want it to appear like this on the COBO, 15 to 20 years, 21 to 25 years. So that's why I said a range. So not specifically only those who are 15 to 20, but 15 to 20, 21 to 25, 26. How do we do that on the COBO? That was my question. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, exactly. sorry. That was my question. Yes. Okay. Yes, I got because that. not everyone will be comfortable giving you a specific, some, some, if you are collecting some, um, there are some people who will not give you um, 25 years or no. Uh, the person will tell you, I prefer giving you a range. So if you ask the person that give me, what's your age? And the person says, uh, I can't give you your, I can't give me your, your my, my age. You can say, you can go for that, say, please, can you give me a range? Where does your age fall? Yes. And that can also be, yes. So that's my question. Yes. So we can we can say, for example, now, um, what is your age range? Uh, and in that case, <laughs> thanks, Mbou. You've learned a lot from that misunderstanding. Yes. So yeah, you can select one. Actually, you can just create a grouping and say, what is your age range? And then you can have. 15 to 20, 21 to 25, and 26 to 30. So you can add that. Of course, when you're having that kind of range, you are not going to get an individual age from a person. You're just getting categorizations, OK? So in that case, this respondent falls in this category of 15 to 20, if they select 15 to 20 or uh, 21 to 25, okay? So here you just use select one and give the ranges that you have. Or even you can say, uh, of course, above 31 or 31, okay? So you just put an option. You can just put an option. I, and that, Wonderful. that would work. Mm -hmm. There's also a question from Ifeoma Anuga, welcome. Yeah. Okay, good morning. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. So um please I would like to add if you say you want to restrict the age to an age range, don't you think it would also restrict the analysis, the data analysis? Assuming you want to run a regression, 
specifying the age will make it easier for you to run the regression, a regression analysis. But if it's grouped, it becomes um, difficult and it may restrict the kind of analysis, maybe to just descriptive analysis if one would want to run search. So in yeah. that case, Mm -hmm. Is it possible to um, specify, um, have two options, in which case um, the person can, those who would want to specify their real age would specify, and those who would want to group with, those who would want to specify the age range, but then it's still going to be very difficult. I think it's better we agree on one, depending on the kind of analysis the person would want to do, the researcher would want to do. Yeah, and as you said, that really depends on the research design. That really depends on what you want to do with your data. Um, if the age is a very important variable for which analysis has to be done, uh, like you're saying a regression, obviously you would want the raw age. But if you're just looking for some basic descriptives, uh, maybe then having these options like binning them into categories, uh, age ranges would work. It's all right, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Wangari, anything to say on that? No, oh, I think this is very interesting. We are discussing at two levels. One, the technical bit on an example of how to set a question with uh, different options. And then on the wider discussion about how to create a survey tool that makes sense. So uh, please understand that this this um, practical workshop has those two levels. So while Isaac was asking for an example on how to set up you know, options for answering a question, there has come about a different discussion, which is great, about age. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and what Ifeoma is asking is really important. You know, sometimes when you go to the field, you've really designed the questionnaire and all that, and then you realize that you're not going to be able to capture the details that you wanted, or you, re you, you realize that actually you'll not be able to perform a type of analysis because this data sometimes is, you know, my, maybe you are doing it for your organization and then another organization asks for the same data so that they can do some analysis. And then they tell you, actually, we, we, are, we are not able to, you know, get whatever values you want because the way you captured this data was entirely wrong. So it's not that it was wrong by design. It is wrong in the sense that whatever they want to do with the data is not suiting their needs. So you, 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 you really have to think about all scenarios. And maybe, I don't know, maybe those who uh, feel, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, let me throw this back to Ifeoma. What do you think? Do you think it's good to have your age in years, and then another question to come to capture the age range. And then that could help fit different data analysis needs. Do you think that would be a good idea? OK, well, I, I do not think it's a good idea, because if we have, um, if you, if one is still going to run a regression analysis, you cannot use the age in range. So that has cut that out. For me, what I like doing is leaving the option open. So people can specify their ages. Those who do not specify the age, who are not able, maybe for personal reasons, to specify their age, they may not be a very significant number. And so you can do away with that and use, I, I believe, from my experience in the field, in the research, in research anyway, um, in many cases, we have more people specifying their ages. It also depends on the people collecting the data. Um, you can convince, like what I do when I go to the field to collect data is that I try as much as I can to convince my respondents to specify their age, even if some may not remember their age, yes, because we have such experiences too. Um, I try to give them uh, a, a kind of range, depending on how they look. How do you think we're born? Uh, maybe do you, are you, do you think you're up to 50? That's especially the older ones who do not, for the older ones who do not really know when they were born. I try to see if I can guess or tell them, okay, do you think you were born say 50 or 52 or 53 years ago? Then somehow you get a somewhat correct age of the person. But for those yeah, who are I not agree sure, with you. You, can to take it off. you can decide to take it off and leave it blank. I think it's better to collect the specific age. 
because you can you can play around the data. That's just the truth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. And just Jack Karasi um, has said it well. We have conflated two topics, which is to how to design a good questionnaire and how to how to use yeah. Cobalt Toolbox, which is quite okay. This is a wonderful and rich discussion. So David says, I saw XML form code on validation settings. Is it a syntax or rather script used in Cobo? Just curious. Okay. Now, uh, let's, first of all, before I come to that, there's someone whose hand has been up called Idrisu. Oh, yes. Yes, and then welcome, Idrisu. After Idrisu, uh, because I can see, of course, people are saying, let's continue with the designing the question. I'll, I'll, I'll move on because there's just a little bit more we need to cover and then we can look at questions. So let's wow. hear from Idrisu and then we carry on quickly and then we'll look at other questions a, a bit later. So my name is Idrisu from Ghana. Please, I, uh, I think we have to continue because uh, my sister Ifioma has made the point that I wanted to move. Uh, uh, as a, a researcher, it's always good to, I mean, uh, capture your age in a continuous manner so that you can manipulate it the only way you want. But if you capture it in a, a range form, when you want to change it to a continuous form as when it's needed, it's very difficult to do that. So I would prefer what Ifema was talking about. That is what I wanted to add. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really liking the rich discussion. And maybe that's a topic for another day, how to design a good questionnaire. <laughs> so we've done very well. Um, there is also another comment on the same about age. It depends on what type of regression logistic is the best with age ranges. And Isaac is eager that we continue with this session <laughs> on how to design. <laughs> but Enoch oh, okay. thinks that we need to learn both. <laughs> yeah, there's no time and, for and Patrick, Actually, research yeah. question, issues to do with research can be quite me. So let me just move on and then yes. we'll come to the Let's issue continue. of XML. Yes. Um, now, Thank you. the next thing, the next thing is sometimes in your questionnaire, you might have groups of questions. So you might want to group questions into specific groups. Now, as we say, as you can see, these questions here are all about the respondents' personal details. So we want to group them and call them personal details. So what you need to do is to click on each question here where there's this icon on the left and then click on the control button. So when, when you click on it, it's highlighted in blue. Click on the control button. And then while holding the control button, click the other questions. These four. Okay. All of them should be highlighted in blue. And once that is done, there's this icon on the top left here, the one that has got multiple squares shadowing each other. And when you hover above it, you'll see create group with selected questions. And once you click on that, you'll see a group called, I mean, a group will be formed and you can call it respondents, respondents, personal details. And once you do that, you can collapse it so that the questions are now under that. Okay, so I really want to just move a bit faster, just, and actually uh, in order to, let me just, uh, All day, you say you are not successful. Could you tell us more? Are you stuck? All day? By the way, Enoch, we, we forgot about Enoch. I don't know whether he's... Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, so the selection of the questions. Let me delete my group. So select them with their mouse button, click, click on the question. Actually, anyway, in the question, actually, no, here on the right, left side, where we have the icon like ABC. 
click until it's highlighted in blue and then hold the control button down. And while the control button is held down, click on the other questions and they'll all be selected in blue. Now here on the top left corner, there's this icon that's some squares with multiple, you know, multiple squares shadowing each other. And it's called create group with selected questions. So click on that and create a group and call it respondent personal details. Okay. Can you can you repeat that step, please? Yes. Yeah, sure. You you should repeat it. We are lost. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe to make groups seem more intuitive. Okay, let's just, the thing is this, when you have a questionnaire, you can have a group of questions. For example, personal details, household details, geographic details, and under those groups, you have multiple questions related to household, related to the personal, personal details, etc. So in that case, you want to group them into groups of questions. So these questions as they are right now, they are just questions in sequence, but you might want them to belong to a group. So in this case, you need to create a group over these questions. So as it is right now, these questions are unselected and ungrouped. So you first of all need to select them. But if you click, if you, you can see on the left of the question, there's this icon like ABC and uh, this one here, you know, what is your sex? One, two, three, ETC. You need to click on that section so that the question is highlighted in blue. As you can see, when I clicked here, there's a blue border that appears, okay? So click there on the first question but you want to select the other questions also. So in order to do that, if you, if you try to select them individually like that, you can see that the other ones become de-highlighted, but you want the others to remain highlighted. So hold the control button. The control button is written CTRL on your keyboard. Hold the control button down. And while the control button is still held down, click on the other questions. Do not release the control button. Click on the others, such that they're all highlighted in blue. And once they're all highlighted in blue, click, there's this icon here called create group with selected questions on the top left of the form. Click on that and a group will be created. Now call that group on the group where, where it's written group, but type there respondents, personal details. Okay, I hope that's now clearer. Are you well what, answered? Yeah, once the group is created, you can collapse it so that the questions are hidden, just to create space. Maja, are you well answered now? Very good one, boy. Oh, I, my, my, my case is failing to, to make it blow. I don't know what is up there. Oh, okay. if you're having problems uh, navigating on your side, also Enoch, maybe you can follow the Zoom session yeah. and then later, you'll be able to uh, watch the recording as you're doing it on your yeah. Kobo account. Yeah. Okay. Now, very quickly, so now add another question. And this question will be... So let, let me actually, I want you to do this on your own now, very fast. The next question would be how many people are in this household. And of course, that will be a number. Then the next one will be which 
of the following. Are your household sources of income? Now, this one will be select many. The type will be select many. And the options you'll put are business, salary, casual work, and others. Then, sorry, I'll just come to you guys. Yeah. So do those ones first. And I'll also just do them on my screen so that you can see. So the first. Some questions in the chat. Yes. And they are being answered. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get to you about other. So other is something called a skip logic. That's the topic I want us to come, the subtopic I want to come to, okay? So we have here, how many people are in this? How many pe people are in this household? Um, sorry and it will be a number and then which of the following are your household sources of income and as we said it is select many because you want them to be able to select multiple options so business salary Click to add another response. So, casual work. And then we have other. Okay. Now, uh, add another question. Called if other. Please specify. Okay. If other, please specify. And it will be a text. Okay, how many are with me up to there? I'm sorry, I've gone a little fast because of time and you know, we've not yet even uh, <laughs> installed Kobo Collect on the phone. So we need to just move. Okay, so those who have gone a bit faster, you can group these other questions into a group called household details. So if you collapse, you can see we've got two sections, respondents, personal details and household details. How many are here? I want to come to the issue of other called a skip logic.
uh, great Patrick and David and Sylvia. Okay. Now, what we want to do is this. If, if, if the person chooses business, salary, casual work, then we'll move on to the next question. However, if a person chooses other, you want them to specify what other work they do. So in order to do that, we create another question, this one that we've created, if other, please specify. Then we create a skip logic such that if they answer other, then this question is displayed. So in this case, go to this question called if other, please specify. And on its settings, where there's the gear, click on that gear so that it displays this uh, form. And then we have the question options, click on skip logic. Click on skip logic. And then click on add a condition. Now, once you add a condition, you'll see select question from list. So click on that, select question from list. And the, you'll see the question which we want to link the skip logic to at the bottom there, which of the following are your household sources of income. So click on that. And you can see there we've got a number of options, you know, whether the question was answered, whether it was not answered equals to. So we can click on equals to, and then now the options appear. Business, salary, casual work, other. Choose other. So what we are saying here is that we want this question to appear if the respondent chooses other. Okay. Which of the following are your household sources of income is equals to other? Click on save. And you can close that. And therefore the respondent will be able to, will be able to see, you know, when we run the questionnaire, this question will appear if the person chooses other. And the last question is enter the respondent's GPS location. This one was just to demonstrate GPS. Click on add question and click on point. Okay, so it is going to choose the point um you know the longitude and latitude so there we are we have our questionnaire and now click on save we want to now go and install cobo collect on our phone and collect data but before we do that we have to deploy this form so once you click on save Click close here and click on deploy. And once you click on deploy, you should be able to see that the form now is deployed. Down here, you can see collect data. Now, there are many ways to collect data. Online, offline, you can do it on the web. Or if you scroll down, you can see Android application. Now, before we go to Android application, quickly click on online, offline. And what this means is that you can also collect your data from the website, uh, web interface. Click on this open here. I hope I'm not 
lost anyone. Just I'm going a little bit faster because of time. Oh, you need to, Sylvia, you need to close, you need to first of all close the form. Mildred, the same. So let me go back to my form. When I'm at my form, can you see this save button here? Where we save. Now next to it, there's this cross icon. When you click on that cross icon, you close the form and then it brings you here. So now you can deploy. Mine had already deployed, so I can redeploy if I make changes. And then down here, I hope that's, yeah, got it here, yeah, great. Then down here, you've got collect data. So you can actually collect even using a web interface. So choose online, offline, and then click on open. And there is your form, okay? So you can fill in the details if you want. So uh, very quickly. What is your age? As you can see, I've put a wrong age, so it has to be above uh, that. Are you married? Yes. Household details, maybe six. Other. Now you see, if I choose other, business salary and other, you can see if other specify. Okay, that's when it appears. Side hustle. But if I choose maybe only business and salary, then it doesn't ask me to specify other. But if I say other is when this appears, okay? Then for the GPS location, maybe if you know the name of the place, you can type the name. So, Olusangale Madaraka and such. And then you can get the point and the longitude and latitude will be will be placed there. Then you can submit. Okay. So queued records except those marked as draft are uploaded automatically in the background every five minutes. Click on okay. Then you can enter more. But the point was not to enter on a web interface. The point was to enter on a mobile phone. So Let's now go to installing Kobo Collect, but let me just ensure that majority are together with me. Wangari, I'll request that we just have an additional five minutes. I know we All got right. into a bit of some uh, discussion, but right. we need to. That's fine. The, the main idea was mobile data collection. So <laughs> I don't want people to go without having done the mobile part, but it's quite fast. Yes. Okay. So now have your smartphone with you. And this one is very simple. Go mm -hmm. to your smartphone. Okay. Go to Play Store. Look for Kobo Collect, download and install it. Okay. That should take another two, three minutes. It's not a very big one. Hey, Conrad. Yes. Yes. Before you go to the option now for using the mobile application. Yes. Uh, there's something I felt I can add on uh, the drafting of the questionnaire on the Kobo toolbox. Eh? Yes. Uh, for example, if you have some questions that you want mandatory responses, yes. Uh, maybe you you could uh, share with the participants, or now you can do it so that uh, they also aware. Because uh, with online questionnaires, some people tend to skip so many questions, and you end up with incomplete data. So I know there's a way you can um, regulate so that you have uh, questions that require uh, uh, mandatory responses. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Sorry, where was I? Okay, so 
Yeah, so when you go to the question, when you go to the question, for example, what is your name? Uh, click on the settings, click on the settings, and then you can see here, we've got mandatory response. So you can put yes. We can't can see your yes. screen, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, new share. Uh, this one here. Yeah. yeah. So let me just go back on that. So you go to the question, click on the settings, and you'll see uh, an option for mandatory response. And click on yes. And that will make the question mandatory. Uh, while at it, Conrad. Yes. Uh, I, the, the, the geo positioning thing that you are showing, as I saw you search. Yes. Is there a way that uh, this can be set so that, if, for example, if it's a household based collection, yes, then the RA has to walk, the research assistant has to walk into the particular household, and then that's when the GPS thing can be uploaded. I asked this question in mind with those who can sit under trees and try to fill everything quickly to finish? Actually, that's a very good question and it's very valid because even for me here on the, here on the, uh, here on the, on the screen, you, you can pick this, you can see this icon here next. Yes, I can. Yes. Current location. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It okay. will just pick it. And okay. also on the mobile phone, by default on the mobile phone, it actually just picks the current location. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's very good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So now I believe all of you, most of you should be having Cobo Collect on your phone. Okay, now open the app and you will see Yeah, okay, so I'll come to that. Then open the app and click on manually enter project details. Okay. Manually enter project details. So you'll get this, um, you know, yeah, then click on add, add project. Okay. Then enter the following, uh, under server, enter the following, HTTP full colon slash slash kc.cobo toolbox, Sorry, not toolbox, but toolbox, that's going to be disastrous. Dot cobo toolbox dot org, and then enter your username, the one you created for cobo toolbox and your password. So I'll give you just one minute to do that so that you can get there. Server http pc.cobotoolbox.org, then the name that you created, and then the password. Malimo, I have a question. Yes. Is it the name uh, that uh, the owner of the, like if I downloaded Cobo on my phone, I, I am supposed to come up with a name for it, or the owner of the, of the questionnaire? Uh, now you remember when we started, I told you to create an a, uh, to go to the internet and create a Kobo toolbox uh, account. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I was and then care. under that account, you I asked you to create a unique username. You remember when we were joking with Wangare about the many Wangares, you need to create an, a unique username. Okay. That username is what you need to enter here, and the mm -hmm. password. Yeah. Okay. 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 Conrad? Yes. 
uh, can I give an input on a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe she, she was asking about um, if uh, she's not the one who has created the questionnaire on the Corpo toolbox. For example, it's you now, Conrad, who has created. Yes. And uh, maybe she needs to log in to, uh, to her device so that she can uh, be able to collect data. So you may need to share your uh, login credentials with her so that she can be able to log in in a device. And maybe what happens, for example, in um, uh, projects that um, there is, a, it's a project that recruits um, uh, research assistants or data collection enumerators. It is yes. the organization is the organization which uh, does the logins and uh, the uploading of the of the of the forms, so that uh, you just issue like the tablets to the enumerators to go and collect that. Thank you. Exactly. That is the last Thank thing you. we'll do to share your form. So what will happen is once you have created the form. Now let's say now like you, you let's assume you are the organization. You've created the form, isn't it? you'll now take the usernames of these other people and share with them. So I'll show you how to do that very quickly. Then now once, they sh once, once you share, they, 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 uh, when they log in with their own usernames, they'll see the forms that you've shared with them and they'll be able to enter data. Okay. So the thing is this, they'll just have to log in with their usernames or the organization can decide that they want to own those usernames. So you'll create the usernames under the, you see like the way we have your personal email like cojambo at gmail.com and then cojambo at strathmore.edu. If you are an organization and you want your usernames to be under your domain, then you'll tell your users to create a username under you know, your organization's email addresses. But the point is, you as the creator of the form will share the form. And once you share the form to specific usernames, when they log in, they'll be able to see those forms. But I'll show you how to do that. Let's move quickly then. And once you've logged in, okay. Once you've logged in, all the forms that you appear, that you've ever created will appear. I believe you should be having only the example form for those who are still new, okay? Are we there? Yes. Okay. Now, select that form. Now click on, click on uh, get blank form. Click on get blank form. Once you, you'll get this interface, click, click on get blank form. And when you click on get blank form, you will see your form. So you select it. Sorry, those slides were not very well in order. And I'm sorry, I was taking screenshots of my phone and then they didn't get out very clearly. Uh, that's So let me just refer to my phone. So when you click on get blank form, we just, Yeah, you'll see a form and then just a minute. Make sure that it is selected with this blue tick. Mine are many, so I need to select my example form. And then down there, click on get selected. Click on get selected. Okay. It will take you back to this interface. Now, because you've already, you see what you've done is to fetch the form ready for filling. So when you say get blank form, we clicked on the form. Now we've loaded it, then click on fill blank form. Again, you'll see a form, select it. And then now you can start putting data. 
Sorry, I didn't put examples. What is your name? Put next. Okay, I don't know how many are with me up to there. Get blank form first. Once you get it, yeah, nice. Then click on fill blank form. And that way you will now be able to start filling in your data. So I want you to quickly fill in. It was a short questionnaire. What is your sex male? Click on next. What is your age? You can try to play around with invalid values and see whether I, you will. We are good up to there. Very nice. How many people are in this household? Next. No, you don't need to uninstall the form. You don't need to uninstall the form. Next. Enter the respondent's GPS location. Click on start geo point. And that will give you your exact location and then, then just click on save geo point. So this is what Nani was asking uh, right now. Okay. It will just click on start geo point. So maybe you're sitting under a tree. You're having a discussion with the respondent. Just click on start geo point and then click on save geo point and then next. So we don't have time to enter a lot of data. So just click save form and exit. I'm sorry to have taken your time. I'm seven minutes late and I'm still looking at adding another five minutes. I want you to share this form. No worries, we are still here. Okay. Now, once you, so just click that one record and then click on send finalized form. Okay, so it will take you back to the interface. Click on send finalized form. And when you click on save finalized form, you'll see your form. Click on it so that the blue tick appears and then click on send selected. And you should be able to see upload results, example form successful submission. I didn't capture these on my slides. But your slides are a bit behind, or are you doing that from your mobile? I can't. No, no, I'm doing it from my mobile. I realized that I had not captured the, the, that last part. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I believe majority have uh, done that. Let's go back to. Let's go back to our form on the internet. That is the web interf interface. And we'll quickly do two things here. Let's view the data. So I'll close my form. And this section where we had deploy, if I click on data, I should be able to see my data. So that one record that you input, Mine are two because I inserted one over the web interface and another one on the mobile. Yeah, you start with getting a blank form, thanks Michael, so that you can fill in the form. And then once you fill it in, you you know send it send a blank form remember the architecture of this system is that now you've got two maybe i should have talked about the architecture but you know Ida africa we still have time we can always arrange for another training what you have is your mobile phone and then yes the server. for sure remember that the mobile phone is only collecting and sending details to the server okay 
So you have to send the form so that the details are captured on the server. So here where we are on the internet, we are actually working from the server, but the, the, the device is simply uh, a collection point and then it sends the details. Now, very quickly, go to downloads, click on downloads, click on export. And once you click on export, click on download and an Excel file will be downloaded of your data. So you can open it and view the data. So as you can see, that is my data that's been entered there. There's some other details that have been captured by default. Like for example, when you see this um, UUID, what UUID means is that it's a very, it's a unique identifier for each record, okay? So don't be dismayed about that. It simply captures shows that you know it gives a unique those who've done databases understand what a primary key is it's like a primary key a unique identifier some of these are captured by default like the submission time and date and um yeah the starting time and ending time of the questionnaire okay so this you see these are captured by default metadata so most of the time when you're doing your data cleaning, you might end up removing some of these, but the core data that you have should now be visible. Okay. Lastly, lastly is, where is my, Sorry, I, I know the last few minutes have gone quite fast. I didn't want, I know it's a Saturday. Everyone has also got other plans. There's shut up and write and there's many other things. But let me now go to the last part that is sharing your form. So click on form. Now, so this is what uh, Wamboi was asking. Now, when you go back to your form on the top right, Uh, click on more actions, more actions, and you'll see share this project. Okay. Now, this is what Wamboi and uh, the other gentleman, I think it was Michael, were asking. You have a project, you've created it, you've got enumerators you want to share with them. Now you add user. Okay. So very quickly, put the username that you had uh, created on the chat so that we can share each other's forms. Mine is CEO Jambo. Let me just put it there. Let me see others so that we can share. Put your username on the chat, the one you created. David Nene, yeah, so I can share with David Nene. Okay, and then there are those things that David can do. I've shared with David, for example, do, do I want him to edit the form? Maybe he's my colleague and we are, we are actually working on this project together. I can allow him to edit. I can also allow him to view submissions, okay? And there are other permissions like edit submissions and all that, more often than not, you 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 give the uh, you give the, the then after that you click on grant permissions. Or they ask if emails can also be 
included for sharing for collaboration? Is it possible to send to emails? Uh, to, to, to send the form to an email. Does it have that feature or only the Kobo usernames are there? No, just the Kobo username. I, okay. I have not tried with the email. It could be possible, but uh, just use the Kobo to username actually, because there was a time I also tried logging in with my email and it, it rejected it. Okay, so I can now share with Idrisu. So the thing is this, when you now log on to Kobo toolbox, you will see that you have many forms that have been shared by other people. So now you can get the blank form. When you go to get blank form, you can pick the one that has been shared with you and then you enter data, okay? So I hope this now clears the air about sharing. I hope that is um, clear. You just grant permissions to you know, your, your respondents, uh, no, not respondents, but uh, the people who you want to collaborate with. How do you go about using the QR code? Pardon? How do you go, go about using the QR code? Ah, okay. QR code, uh, now, that would end up being a little bit more, I can arrange for another tutorial, but the thing about the QR code is that, you see, the way we are trying to share right now, the way we are putting usernames and giving permissions, you would create, you would create a QR code for specific users, and then they would scan that QR code in order to access the form. But I think uh, maybe because of time, uh, I can, I'll share these slides with the, uh, uh, there's, some, there's some material I've prepared. I'll it's also all right, take your time. About the QR code so that you can go about it. But the QR code is just a matter of being able, you see like when you're on the field, sometimes it's quite tedious to do all this typing and all that. So you just need to grant permissions to people, give, create a QR code for them, and then they, uh, it is just scanned and immediately they have uh, permission or access to your form. Okay, I'll include you. this in the slides. I, I've realized some of my slides have a few things that are missing, which need to which need to be included. Also, I want to urge you to play around uh, to play around with things like skip logic and validation. That is very key for getting clean data. So for example, I want you to try in your free time. You see the question we had about, um, are you married and how old are you? Now, if the respondent, remove, remove the logic, remove that um, validation for 18. If the respondent is below 18, then do not ask them whether they are married. But if the respondent is 18 or above, then the question, are you married, should appear. Okay, so that is one of the things I want you to try with the skip logic. Then you can also put skip logic on a group. You can also put skip logic on a group. There are some few more questions I'll send you, land details, which we didn't cover. And if the respondent has land, then all the questions of land should appear. So that one of the questions will be, do you own land? If yes, then questions related to land should appear, you know, like how many hectares ETC. If no, end the questionnaire. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for from me. Uh, I'll put details of QR code. One boy has asked one more question here. I think I'd seen it. Uh, where was it? I think there's something uh, about cloning the project. Would you advise this as a, actually, instead of cloning, you can create a template so that, you know, if you have a questionnaire, which you know will be repeated, you can create a template upon which other 
question, uh, uh, questions can be created. Uh, unless, um, uh, but so that there's cloning on two levels. You clone the questionnaire as questions without data, or you can clone the project and have the same data elsewhere. Uh, I don't see the need for that because the data is just there in the server. If you want to share the data, you can share it with other people, but you can clone a form and share it with other people so that they can customize it to their own needs. Otherwise, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm sorry, at the last one, I went really fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. But There's a question from Lillian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lillian Musembe asks, what advantage does COBOL have over ODK app? Simply that it's totally free. Simply okay. that it's totally free. O ODK has got a little bit of some paid, you know, like um, it scales down some of the features. Then if you want more of those features, you have to pay. Now you just know educational institutions like us and some research needs. We don't have budgets for those. So yeah, Kobo is oh, totally, wow. totally free. Thank you. Patrick has raised his hand. Welcome. Well, my question has been answered. I wanted to ask about the subscriptions, like uh, the way they do in Survey CTO, but uh, thanks for answering. It's free, yeah? Yes. Wonderful. There's a lot of people saying thank you. So educative, much appreciated. There's a need for a follow-up session, Zadok says. Ahmed is asking for a session on data analysis using SPSS. And a lot of people saying thanks a lot. I have gained a lot, although I joined late. Thanks a lot, Juan Limu. Very informative and interesting. Thank you so much for this session. Thank you all. Well done. So I highly encourage you um, members to volunteer yourselves to actually lead a research mentorship session. I've also learned a lot today. And uh, Conrad, you can see that now you will be able to create a series for us. Uh, I think we should have more of even just this uh, app itself, Kobo Toolbox, uh, if you can get us another session that will be really useful. Thank you for your time today. And it was really uh, amazing. We've had SPSS series in the past at a small cost because that is quite technical and we'll need uh, a few more logistical. Uh, a lot of people ask me about SPSS and Stata, and um, that is actually possible. We can arrange for that. So I'd like to thank the Ada Africa team, Aurelia Monene, the founder, Ray, our programs coordinator, David, our technical lead. And I'd also like to make some announcements. We will be having our usual shut up and write session that's usually on Saturdays from 9 to 11 a.m. Well, today we were here, but we also have another shut up and write session from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. All you need to do is study from wherever you are and then report in the WhatsApp group about how your process was of creating an interrupted study time. So if you're going to join us in that speed train, uh, later on today in about five hours, uh, please let us know in the WhatsApp group. If you're not able to join us today, you can join us on Tuesday. On Tuesday, um, one of us, Luis Masharia, actually has set up a Zoom link so that we can also interact as we study. So we want to see how many of us will be able to actually practice a lot of these things that we are learning. And remember that you can always get yourself an accountability buddy as well. And oh, thank you so much, Conrad, for sharing your contact. Please also share your email address for those of us who may want to contact you after this. And um, on, so as I said, we will have a shut up and write session today at 4 p.m. and on Tuesday at 2 p.m. And then we will have next week on Thursday at 7 p.m. a session on burnout in researchers. So for those of us interested in improving our self-care, please join that session by Dr. Lydia Wambui, also one of us. So you are also welcome to register on the Calendly link whenever you would like your individual research mentorship sessions. Those ones have been going on very well. And um, I encourage you to please set an alarm if you have 
uh, booked a session because sometimes you find that uh, journal club members will book that they would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session. Usually it's on Saturday early in the morning between seven and nine, the second and third Saturday, but sometimes you find that you don't show up. So please put an alarm so that you can do that. We will be having those sessions on the 14th of May, which is the second Saturday of next month and the 21st of May. So thank you so much, everybody for joining there's still a lot more thank yous on the chat and thank you for giving us your number 0717188449 and your email cogambo at gmail.com so enoch says i could volunteer for a talk on ethics in research yes that is the journal club spirit we are all about sharing and please uh contact raymond so that uh he can schedule you in and then Sylvia is asking if there is a WhatsApp group for Shut Up and Write. No, there is. Uh, oh, yes, there is a separate group as well, which you can engage anytime in a Shut Up and Write session, uh, aside from the Journal Club group. And David will share that in our WhatsApp chat. If you're not yet a member of Journal Club, please uh, fill in the link that I had shared earlier in order that you may join us. We operate from WhatsApp platforms which are free for all and we share. It doesn't matter your discipline or level or university. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. I think next session, Conrad, we should have a good two hours so that we really take time and have everyone um, you know, be able to open uh, yeah. their core bottle works. Yes, so we should not do one and a half hours. We should do two hours. That's the natural time it will take. Yeah, we really, really appreciate your time, uh, Conrad, and uh, your wonderful facilitation. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, so, for technical ones, yeah, we need two hours. <laughs> yes, but, we need yeah, two hours. Fun. So, so we will agree with you when you else you're available and members can be able to join in. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, everyone.